Hi there, my name is Sarah Rapp and I'm a study expert who has helped thousands of students get the best grades of their entire lives with the least amount of time studying. Today, I want to talk about what I wish I had known before I started high school because it probably would have made my high school experience way more enjoyable and I hope that that's exactly what it does for you. Firstly, being organised is key. High school is different from primary school in that you will have different teachers and different classmates for each subject, most likely. And so what that means is that the only person who is aware of what homework you have for each subject and when it's due, and the only person who is responsible for getting that homework done in time is you. In 2015, when I was in high school, well, 2010 to 2015, I used a physical study planner. And under each day, I would write the classes that I have and the homework that I got from each class and when it was due. I would also skip forward and write down under the date when I had any assignments due or when I had an exam scheduled. Nowadays, with the development of technology, I recommend to my students to use something like a Google Calendar or a Notion template. This is an example of a Google Calendar template that you could use. Basically, what you can see is under every day, you've got your class classes scheduled in for when they actually are during the day as an event and then as you go through the day you can open the event and you can add the homework that you were given from that class. You can also skip forward and find the date of the exam or the date that an assignment is due and actually add that as an event and you can send yourself reminders or you can schedule reminders like a week before, two weeks before so that it doesn't catch you by surprise. Number two, you will likely change friendship groups over time. I apologize, it's gonna get a little bit personal over the next couple of minutes. But basically, my friendship groups changed throughout high school from like year seven and eight to year nine and 10 and year 11 and 12. I wanna specifically focus on the time during year nine and 10. This was a time where I guess I had this preconceived idea or I had this desire to be popular, right? I really wanted to hang out with the popular girls. And so I changed basically everything about me in order to try to get them to like me and try to hang out with me. And I would try to sit with them at lunch and so on and so forth. And no matter what I could do, I really just never felt like I was a part of it. I always just sort of felt on the outside. I felt sort of closed off. And it was really, really mentally exhausting and it made me even more insecure because I just couldn't understand why they didn't like me. As I grew older and I went into year 11 and 12, my priorities shifted, right? And I started to focus more on my academics because I was really, really focused on getting into medical school. I focused more on the stuff I was doing on social media, on my own health, and well-being and I sort of stopped caring about what other people thought of me and I found confidence in what I was able to do in my achievements and when I stopped caring about what other people thought about me I gravitated and I started to make friends who were just happy to be around me as I was because I just didn't really have the time to put on this facade and pretend to be somebody that I wasn't. And these were the friends who actually energized me, who made me feel better about myself and who sort of, it's hard to explain, but like instead of feeling drained after hanging out with them, you feel full of energy, you feel bursting with joy, your heart feels full and it, it's an amazing form of self-care essentially. And so looking back on it now, I realize like, you know, there's the popular kids who maybe have a tennis court, have a beach house, have parties every weekend, know a lot of guys, you know, and maybe that's why people view them as popular. But on the other hand, there's also the kids that are just genuinely good people and who can bring a smile to your face, who can make you feel good about yourself, who can make you laugh about the smallest things. And whilst they might not necessarily be viewed as stereotypically popular, those are the people that everybody likes. And for me, I think having that impact on someone is now way, way, way more important to me than what people think of me based on you know, like superficial things like what I have or how many guy friends I have and so on and so forth. Obviously, it's really hard to understand that in high school. And if you had gone back and told my year nine self that, I probably would have told you to, you know, go away or something. Just take it, you know, with like a pinch of salt from me as somebody who's been through 
it. Please don't try to change yourself and change who you are to fit in or to get other people to like you. The people that matter and the real ones and your real friends will like you exactly the way that you are because of the qualities that you have, not what you put on display and not for your achievements, not for how much money you have, not for how you dress, not for how you look, but how you make them feel. Number three, your grades will not make or break your future. In year 11 and 12, again, another story time, I set my eyes on a 99.95 ATAR. For those of you who aren't Australian students, basically the ATAR is the grade that you get or the mark that you get after year 12, which pretty much determines what university you get into or what university course you get into. So a 99.95 is the highest ATAR that you can get. After all that hard work on December 2015, two months after my exams, I got a text telling me that I got a 99.9 ATAR. That is the second highest mark. And I cried. I cried for, you know, three or four hours straight, like massive on the ground, sobbing heat. And my family was so confused because that is still like an excellent mark, right? That's like the second highest mark in the whole country. But I was crying because I had set my sights on some arbitrary number that meant so much to me, even though it would not affect my future whatsoever. I still got into medical school with my ATAR and I probably could have gotten a much lower ATAR and still gotten into medical school anyways. So why did it matter? I think it's hard because in high school, you're sort of conditioned to believe that your grades are basically everything, right? Your grades are who you are. Your grades define what you become in the future. Because if you think about it, high schools want their students to do well because that demonstrates that they are a good sort of high school to go to, that their teachers are good, that they teach well, they have good facilities and so on and so forth. And that's fine, you know, like fine. That's I, also, I guess, encourages students to do better. But I think they, I think in high school, we forget to tell students or we forget to remind students that there are so many other pathways in life. So even if I hadn't graduated with a 99.9 ATAR, like I said, I could have still gotten into medical school. Even if I had gotten a much lower ATAR, and couldn't get into medical school with that grade, I could have taken a different pathway, done like another degree before going into medical school and becoming a doctor anyways. There are so many different pathways to get to the career that you want to that are not necessarily defined by the mark that you graduate or your high school marks. Similarly, my best friend didn't really try in high school because she didn't need an ATAR to do what she wanted to do after high school. And she's one of the most successful people I know. I look up to her so much much and she is doing so well for herself she is killing it and nobody asks about how she did in high school nobody cares about how she did in high school at the end of the day being hard working being resilient being passionate being easy to work with and you know being taking the initiative and going out of your way to do what makes you happy and what drives you is probably going to lead you to more success than a simple grade or a simple number on a page that you receive in high school. That's not to say that you shouldn't try because my whole video is about study and my whole YouTube is about studying, obviously. So do try because you do owe it to yourself to do your best, right? Like I said, being hardworking is one of the qualities that you need. So try your best. At the end of the day, you can fully and truthfully say that you did your best and that is enough to be proud about because I, I'd, be, I'd be super proud of you if you just came to me and you told me that you did your best. I wouldn't even ask what grades you got. I would just care that you put in as much effort as you could have because you owe that to yourself, not to anyone else. Number four, you absolutely do not need to give up the things that you love to excel in high school. When I was in high school, I basically did everything that you could think of. Diving, cheerleading, karate, choir, musical, house drama, gym, social media, and you know, running my online business and my Instagram, going out on the weekends, dates, you know, spending time with family and so on and so forth. And people would always be like, Sarah, why are you doing all that? You're gonna burn out. But what they don't understand is that incorporating these activities and incorporating what I loved actually 
helped me become more productive and made me almost like a master in time management because I had to be organized and I had to use my time wisely so that I could do the things that I loved, right? And so I talk a lot about time management strategies and productivity tips in my previous videos, which I'll link below. But at the end of the day, the most important things are like time blocking, I would say, using active study techniques so that you can learn more in less time, um, using the Pomodoro technique, which is 25 minutes of studying, five minutes rest, and then repeat it four times, and then take a 10 to 15 minute break, and also prioritizing sleep. Because if you get enough sleep, you are there for more efficient during the day. But if you wanna learn more about that, I will link my time management strategies in the description below. And last but not least, your teachers want you to succeed. Don't ever be afraid to ask questions in class or to ask for extra help outside of class. I found that in the later years of high school, my teachers became more like friends or mentors who I really looked up to rather than just teachers who would sort of like talk at me. I was constantly asking questions in class. I was constantly asking for more resources, more challenging homework or practice exams and for help with questions that I didn't understand over email or in person. And never once did they get annoyed at me or tell me to stop or talk down on me when I asked for help. In fact, they often went out of their way to help me because they saw just how driven I was and how much I really wanted to succeed, which is what they wanted for me as well. And when I got the highest mark in the state for three of my subjects, they were the ones who were the most proud of me. Now that I am a tutor myself, I can say without a doubt that that is exactly what I think about my students. When they engage with me, when they answer the questions that I have, even if they're wrong, as long as they give it a go, if they ask me questions to clarify, if they ask me more work, I look upon that positively because I can see that they want to do well and that they are really putting in their best effort, which makes me happy. And I'm always happy to respond to them, you know, when I can. And so, yeah, those are the things that I learned in or after high school that I wish somebody had told me before I started high school. I would love to know what year you're in, whether you're in high school already or about to start high school. And if you did find it useful, I would really, really love if you guys could like and subscribe. Please remember that if you ever feel nervous about something or you, if you ever have any questions, feel free to comment, feel free to send me a DM on Instagram or TikTok. I'm always, always here to help. And I want you guys to be happy and to enjoy school and to thrive because that makes me happy. Thanks guys.